welcome back to my channel if you are new i am andrea siobhan and i'm currently a specialist in the united states army i am here at the warrior walk on fort stewart and it is a lovely wednesday it is 17 17 and it was just raining for like 30 seconds only like 30 seconds ago but other than that other than that it's a really really nice day today's video i was asked an interesting question what don't i like about the military i'm always talking about the things that i like about the military but what don't i like about the military and i figure i'll just give six cons of the army even though it's a really good day i am going to go and find a more comfortable setting so we'll start this video when i head over there For those of you who are new here, I am Andrea Shaban, and I am currently a specialist in the United States Army. I am also a single mother of two, so I make military related content and I also just talk about my experiences being a single parent in the Army, active duty in the Army. So if you're interested, you can subscribe. You don't have to, but I mean, if I were you, I would. I'm just saying. We're gonna jump right into it, but do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so YouTube alerts you when I post new videos. And make sure you're leaving comments. Let me know how I'm doing. Guys, we're almost to a thousand subscribers, and I'm pretty excited about that, you know, that milestone right there. But before my camera dies, we're gonna go ahead and um, jump right into this video. I'm not 100% sure on how the question was formulated, but it was, something along the lines of what wouldn't I like about coming into the military and so I came up with six now there are so many more and I'm sure if I ask six different people they would come up with their own six different reasons but these are mine and number one being you're going to give up your younger years when you come into the army a lot of these guys are coming in as young as 17 years old you can retire after 20 years so coming in at 17 retiring after 20 plus years you're going to be what in your 40s that's you giving up your younger years and even if you were to do just one contract two contracts that's still you giving up your early 20s a sensitive time where you're supposed to be growing and understanding yourself and learning yourself even more you are kind of giving away to fight for your country that's something that you won't really get to enjoy number two would be you are just a number now i know they paint this fairy tale like you are going to be so important and everyone's going to have your back and everyone's going to be looking out what's best for you and no it's it's, it's not necessarily like that. God forbid something happens to you, you're gonna be replaced. If something happens to you, the whole entire military can't stop because this one soldier lost their lives. Of course, they're gonna be honored and they're gonna be remembered and they're gonna be missed and, and it's, it's gonna be a tragic thing that takes place, but immediately somebody's gonna be taking that. Somebody's gonna, they're, somebody's gonna be signing their name on that line and they're gonna be replacing you're just a number that's it number three would be rank is everything now that could be a good thing because of the structure that it could provide but it is a bad thing when you're that lower rank something crazy happens and you do or say something that ordinarily would have been okay when it comes to defending yourself but in and in, in, it don't fly an army for example let's say you are a private first class you got punched in the face by a e5 for whatever reason we don't know you punch this e5 back defending yourself it's a good chance you as a private first class you're going to get in trouble because 
you assaulted and disrespected a non-commissioned officer and you disrespect rank. If you read the regulation, and I'm not 100%, I don't know word for word, but if you read the part where it talks about uh, providing like dignity to a soldier, I can't remember exactly how it was worded. NCOs giving soldiers respect. It's like a paragraph. It's like, it's non-existent. The chapter about respecting rank and respecting your superiors basically it's like pages and it goes into detail about everything like i said the example before if they punch you and you punch them back in self-defense you're in trouble rank is everything in my opinion these are all opinions disclaimer disclaimer disclaimer, disclaimer. <laughs> number four you lose some rights the big one being freedom of speech when you are in the military not just the army, when you are in the military, you cannot openly talk bad about certain things, certain people, certain situations. You, you, you just can't. You cannot talk bad about the United States, about the government, about, you know, any of this, because it makes you look bad. I mean, it's who you work for. So what would that look like if you're an employee of our government, but you're sitting there talking horribly about the government. Yeah, you may have your own opinion, your own views and stuff like that. We all do, including myself. But it's not something that you can talk openly about because you really can get in trouble. Number five is you are going to miss out on big events in life, big life events. Birthdays, weddings, funerals, graduations. These are things that it's part of the job. You're just gonna miss out on some things. I have buddies here who miss their kids being born, missing close family members' funerals, your baby's first birthday. I mean, it's, yeah, you definitely miss out on those things. And it's kind of bittersweet because a lot of that stuff, you, you know, you want to be involved. You don't want to be missing out on your child's life. You don't want to be absent. Yes, it's for a good reason. And I'm telling you, if you join the army and you do what you're supposed to do and you take advantage of what they have to offer to you, you can set life up really nice for you and your kids and your family. But it sucks when you have to be away from them for an extended period of time. So yeah, you miss out on things and it sucks, but it's part of the job. It's something that you have to go with. Eh. Eh. Last but not least, number six, respect flows up, not down. Did I say that right? <laughs> yes, respect flows up, not down. Okay, let me, let me stop and let me, let me back up you are going to run into a lot of higher ups they for some reason feel strongly that respect flows up and not down and i say that by they think that the people underneath them have to automatically and always respect them which you do because they're a higher rank but they don't feel that they need to respect coming down now that's not everybody because i'm telling you i met some dope master sergeants some dope first sergeants some dope star majors captains Lieutenant Colonels, I've met a lot of good people, but there's definitely a lot of entitled people. Granted, I mean, I, I thought everybody should be, you know, treated with dignity and all that stuff, but sometimes don't exist here in the Army. But it's crazy though, because if you see it, you know the ones though. Charlie Mike, you know what I'm saying? Like that's one thing that you shouldn't let bother you because at the end of the day, when we're down range, those bullets can hit you just as well as they can hit me. So, hey. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I had. Six cons of joining the military. Not necessarily why you shouldn't join. I mean, I guess it could be like, I guess the same thing, huh? If you have any more questions, don't forget to leave a comment down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record.